Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another episode of Civilization 6 Tips, where today we're going to be talking about placing your first district and how to choose which district you want first and when you should be getting your first district. So districts in Civ 6 are probably the biggest change and the one that a lot of people have a lot of trouble adjusting to over previous Civ games because now your city centers are more so spread out and where you get your yields from are a lot, uh, it's a lot more complex than it was in previous Civ games. So just being able to make sure that you know where to start and having a good place to start and a good plan to follow can be super helpful for making sure that you are going to be succeeding in your games of Civ 6. So, just as a quick overview here, I think that there are really, there are three options for which district you are going to be getting first in any game of Civ. The three options are your Holy Site, your Campus, or your Encampment District. And these are unlocked with Astrology, Writing, and Bronze Working, respectively. Normally, you can get Astrology about at the same time you would be able to get Writing, um, but Bronze Working normally does come a little bit later in the tech tree, just because you have to research mining beforehand, and it does have a little bit of a higher uh, just uh, tech cost than these two techs as well. So Bronze Working is a little bit of a later, uh, a, a later tech as well. So let's go ahead and start off and talk about the Holy Site. And I think that the Holy Site is the most, it's the most clear cut of the choices for which, which you want or definitely do not want. So the one big case that you want a Holy Site in is if you are going to be going for a religion. So if you're playing on higher difficulties, I would 100% recommend going for the Holy Site as your first district if you want a religion. That doesn't even matter if you're going for a religious victory or anything of the sort, but if you want to get a religion on high difficulties, prioritize the Holy Site first. You don't necessarily have to rush astrology, it can make your life a little bit easier, but if you want to get a religion, get the Holy Site down, just because that'll give you your one great profit point per turn, and that'll start you on your way towards recruiting your great profit. Because on high difficulties, the, those profits go very fast, and you want to make sure that you get one, because if not, then you're just going to be out of, out of luck, and your entire plan is going to be a little bit ruined by the fact that you can't get a religion. If you're going for a religious victory, I would 100% recommend rushing astrology and rushing the holy site, because if not, if, if you're going for a religious victory and you're not able to recruit a great prophet because they've all been recruited, then your game's over before it has even begun. So, the two use cases for the holy site are, one, if you want a religion, I would, I would definitely go for the holy site as your first district. You don't necessarily have to rush astrology, but definitely place the holy site down as your first district. And if you're planning on a religious victory, 100% rush astrology and rush the holy site as well. Now let's go ahead and move on and talk about the second of our options, which is the Campus District. So the Campus District is a little bit more complex in when you want it over what the Holy Site is. So provided that you don't want to get a Holy Site, and that's definitely not going to be your first pick, then you can choose between the Campus and the Encampment District. So you would want an encamp or a campus district. It's not really as clear cut as or do you want to go for a science victory or don't you? Um, because there are various use cases in which a campus district can be or can't be good. So the first one is that if is if you have a particularly high adjacency spot for your campus district. So in this game, for instance, I have this spot right here, which is uh, it's going to be a plus seven campus because that will be one, two, three, four, five mountains. And since I'm the Netherlands, there's a river here, so that'll be plus two, so plus five plus two that's a plus seven campus and that would be an incredible boost to my science per turn because right now it's only at four so that would almost triple my science output so getting that campus down early would be insanely impactful because as i said my my science output would be almost tripled so that would probably be what i would go for this game just because of the impact that that campus would have very early on so anytime that you're able to get a spot that has probably at least, I'd say at least a plus three campus, if you're able to get a plus three campus or higher, I would definitely recommend going for the campus district early on. Uh, the other big case in which you would want to go for an early campus is if you go into your great people screen and you see if Hypatia is, is the first great scientist. So Hypatia is the scientist that makes it so that your libraries provide plus one additional science and uh, they instantly build a library in the city. That is one of the better great scientists in the game just because that is impactful throughout the entire game. It, it helps your libraries in every single city throughout the entire game. So that is incredibly impactful, not to mention you get the library for free as well. So that gives you a little bit of science for, for no additional cost. So being able to get uh, Hypatia is something that could be very helpful towards your game. So if you, whenever you start a game, just kind of, you know, go up here and check the great people screen and see if Hypatia is the first scientist. If Hypatia is, then I would recommend going for the, the campus district early on, uh, if provided that you're not going for a religion and the holy site. 
and now say maybe you don't want to go for a religion, you're not going for religious victory, and you don't really have any good spots for your campuses, and Hypatia isn't the first great scientist, then I would go ahead and consider the encampment district. So the encampment district, as I mentioned, is normally unlocked a little bit later than these other two districts, but that's not really too big of a problem. You can still rush bronze working fairly easily, and it's easy to boost as well, because all you have to do is kill three barbarians. But the encampment district is some is a district that boosts your military prowess, and it makes it so that you have a lot easier of a time in the early game militarily. So the big cases that I would go for this is if one, if you want to go for an early war. So maybe I see that you know Germany has pretty good land over here. They could have they could have a good campus right there because for us that would be a plus uh, plus five because one two three. Four, five, so they have a spot for a good campus, and say I hadn't found in that city or whatever. So maybe uh, this was just my view. I could see that they have a good spot for a campus. Maybe I'm going for a science victory, and I want that spot because I don't have any. Well, right now I don't have any um, good spots for a campus. So maybe I would want to get the early encampment down, rush them, take their capital, and then secure that land for myself. Uh, that is one of the cases, or maybe if I see there's like a good coast, a good spot of coastline over here um, that could be used for seaside resorts. Maybe I want to take that land from them, so I could put down my encampment and go rush them and take land because land is actually something that is super important in Civ 6, just because of the the prevalence of districts and making sure that you have good spots for your district is something, or for your districts is something that is really nice. So if you see that someone else has good spots for districts, then you can go ahead, build your early encampment, take them out early before they even become a problem and get yourself a lot of land. If you're going for a domination game and obviously you just want to start getting people out of the way as soon as you can and getting yourself into nice, a nice military snowball, I would 100% recommend going for the encampment because it can be super useful. Um, the only exception to this actually would be if if you have a unique unit in the early game, such as maybe Monty with his Eagle Warriors, and it would be more beneficial to just spam that unit, then I wouldn't necessarily recommend even bothering with any district until you're you're at a point where you, you think that you've gotten enough land, you've utilized your unique unit enough, and you're able to go ahead and spend some time on districts. So, uh, yeah, that's the first use case of the encampment, is just if you want to go and early war someone, maybe you want to take out a city-state, take out some neighbors, uh, and just be generally aggressive, and an early encampment can be useful, no matter the victory type. The other big use case is if you want to be very defensive, so maybe your neighbors are a little bit scary, they have pretty big armies, maybe there's a lot of barbarians around. Getting down an encampment can be very nice because it allows you to react to any uh, to any attacks on you, just because you'll be able to produce units a little bit faster, you can build a barracks in the encampment and give your units a little bit more XP as well. So early promotions tend to be pretty impactful, so just having that early encampment means that you're able to maybe pump out units, go take out barbarian encampments, uh, build defensive units against attacks against you, and if you're able to get ancient walls in the city as well, then that's going to be another uh, city ranged attack that you're able to use from the encampment district as well. Um, so if you're going for defense and you want to make sure that you're safe, I would also highly recommend going for an early encampment district. And now this all kind of just brings up the question of, well, when do I really want to get my first district down? You know, when should I be prioritizing that? And my answer to that is that really it depends. It's 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 a it's a really big personal preference thing. Um, I would definitely recommend getting down at least one other city before you start worrying about districts. Just because, as I mentioned before, claiming land in Civ 6 is very important because the the land that you claim will impact the the districts or the the quality of the districts that you get later in the game. So as I mentioned, you know maybe if I if I see some good spots for the campuses or you know commercial hubs or harbors or anything of the sort, I want to make sure I secure that land so that someone else doesn't go settle there. So I would highly recommend prioritizing that over building districts early on. Um, so definitely get at least one city, probably two, before you start worrying about building districts. Um, the, then once you have at least one or two cities, then I would say it's okay to start building districts and you should you should honestly be probably getting your first one down by then. So if I had to give maybe a turn for when that would be, I'd say probably around turn, maybe anywhere in between turn 30 and 40 for getting down your first district. The exception to that is the holy site, which you pretty much just want to get as soon as you can, just because if you don't get that profit, as I mentioned, your game's over before it has even begun. But um, for the campus and the uh, the encampment, probably around turn 30 or 40 or so, and you should be fine. That's that's a pretty good timing, and the bonuses will still be very useful. So now just to recap everything, as we normally do, we have three choices for our first district. We have the Holy Site, the Campus, and the Encampment District. The Holy Site is the one I would normally consider first, and it has a very simple choice. Do you want a religion, or don't you? If you want a religion, 
definitely go for the Holy Site. If you're looking for a religious victory, rush Astrology and the Holy Site, just because you want to make sure that you get that profit. You you really don't want to get, um, you know, you don't you don't want to run in the case where there, all the profits have been recruited and you can't get a religion because then your game's already over. So if you're going for a religious victory, rush Astrology and the Holy Site. If you want a religion, choose the Holy Site as your first district. If you don't want either of those things, then you can consider uh, the Campus next normally. And the campus can be very useful. Um, it's not very useful if you don't have certain uh, uh, cases, but provided that you do have either a good adjacency for it, much like right here where I have this possible plus seven campus, which would almost triple my science output, getting that early campus, it will be very impactful. So it would be a very good choice. So check for any possible adjacencies that you already have in your borders. And if you have a really good adjacency like that, then the campus should be your first district. The other uh, instance in which the campus should be your first district is if you take a look at the Great People screen and look at the First Great Scientist. If the First Great Scientist is Hypatia, which provides plus one science to libraries, to all of your libraries, and instantly builds a library in the city, then you should also go for a, a, an early campus district. Just because of the, the immense impact that that Great Scientist has uh, far outweighs the, the cost of just going for that as your first district or maybe rushing that district. So either if you have good adjacency bonuses possible, uh, plus three or more, or if Hypatia is the first scientist, then you would want to go for the campus as your first district. If you don't want to go for a religion and you don't have good adjacency and Hypatia is not the first great scientist, then I would consider the encampment district, which can be very helpful for just uh, making you a little bit stronger militarily in the early game. Uh, the other instance that you would really want the early encampment is if you want to be particularly aggressive. Um, so maybe if you want to take out someone else, you want to take over the land as fast as you can, go for the early encampment and start producing units because it will speed up the rate at which you produce your units because you get a little bit of extra production. You can get a little bit of extra XP from having the barracks as well. And that will make it so that you're able to spam out units a little bit faster, get those promotions a little bit faster, and steamroll your enemies in the early game. The other instance in which I would build an encampment is if I want to be a little bit safer, I want to be a little bit more defensible, I would go ahead and place down an encampment, maybe to deal with barbarians or to deal with any particularly aggressive neighbors, you know, maybe such as such as Scythia or um, or maybe Genghis Khan or something of the sort, or Shaka that really want to attack you in the early game. Go ahead and get that encampment just for a little bit of safety. Or, you know, if you don't have any of the cases that you want either of these two districts, go ahead and get an encampment just because the encampment is actually... It's a very underrated district that can be helpful throughout the game because you never know, you're probably going to get attacked at some point in the game and having at least one encampment district can be very nice. And as far as timings for these districts go, um, if you're going for the Holy Site, I would just rush that pretty fast. Um, probably you want to get your Holy Site down by turn 20 or so. Um, if you're going for either of these two districts, then around turn 30 or 40 is pretty okay. Normally after you settle at least one or two other cities. I think next week, or just for the next few episodes, we're just going to be going over each uh, each uh, district individually, talking about their adjacency bonuses and what makes them so good. Um, so be looking forward to that. Uh, I'll probably break that up into each individual series. Uh, the one thing I do want to know is, do, do you guys want a video on how to choose where to settle, like outside of like not your capital, how to how to choose where to settle your other cities and how far apart they should be and such? Uh, just let me know in the comment section below if that's something you'd want to see. Um, but thank you everyone for watching, I've been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.